the ultimate predators. State-of-the-art technology shows how the big cats really live. Thermal imaging cameras reveal them to be perfect hunters in the darkness. But even the so-called rulers of the animal kingdom live dangerously. The young depend on the prowess of their mothers just as much as the determination of their fathers, the defenders of the pride. Africa's open savanna is a paradise for grazers. At the other end of the scale, the big cats need good cover. Just like here, many rivulets rise from a swamp, which then form a stream known as the Ronkai. Its water flows for just a few weeks in the year, but this is enough for lush vegetation to take hold. The Ronkai makes its way through the steppes to the Mara River. The Flat Valley is ideal lion country, so much so that two prides have settled here. One of them rules the estuary area, while the other controls the upper reaches with the expansive reed growth. In early August, the huge wildebeest herds from the southern Serengeti come to the region. The dense bushes along the riverbanks provide the big cats with ideal hunting conditions. Nonetheless, mistakes are best avoided. Patiently, she waits for the right moment. This time, it's all too easy. A weak wildebeest has lost contact with the herd. The pride at the upper reaches of the river comprises five females, sisters and half-sisters, born into their territory, which they inherited from their mothers. The lionesses are often alone, especially when they have their young to look after. Then, they rarely meet with their siblings. In August, three of the females on the upper reaches have offspring. Withdrawn, they look after them alone for the first few months. Not all of the lion's neighbors are harmless, though. This python has gobbled down a gazelle, but he is just as keen on a helpless yet tasty lion baby as well. A herd of African buffalo makes its way through the valley, the second mother of the pride knows that the cubs would be in mortal danger should the black giants discover them. As if there weren't enough dangerous neighbors, the lush vegetation of the area attracts elephants too. Nerves of steel are an advantage when sandwiched like this between a herd of buffalo and elephants. In the end, she retreats with her young from the danger zone. The third lioness has found dense foliage in which to accommodate her babies. Her four young are as good as invisible here. The thicket is like a fort, impenetrable, even for elephants or buffaloes.
Lions are born blind and helpless. They are looked after in hideouts such as this for weeks on end and have to be suckled every few hours. The babies can hardly be seen as the infants of kings as only very few of them survive the dangerous initial weeks despite their mother's tireless efforts. The lower course of the Ronkai up to the estuary of the Mara River is the territory of the neighboring pride. Three lionesses have brought up ten strong adolescents, which is an unusually successful result, but at the same time a burden. Because the youngsters are permanently hungry. They're not much help on a hunt either and spend the day fooling around. The valley and the bordering territories are in the paws of four strong brothers. Years ago, they drove other males out of the entire region and with it, took over the lionesses of a huge territory. The stream is but a small section of their kingdom, which they constantly patrol from one corner to the next. The fourth is following a female who seems to be in the mating mood. Then the annoying neighbors turn up yet again. The cozy get together is over. Their majesties are not amused. reputation damaged, charging off with their tails between their legs is obviously not how the royals had imagined their day. Countless grazers live in the lush savannah alongside the stream. This attracts a variety of predators, like the serval, for example. The slender wildcat is particularly keen on small prey. Its sensitive ears rarely even miss the rustling of mice. The open grassland above the valley is the world of the serval. Birds shouldn't become too complacent here either, not as long as the nimble cat is out stalking. This time, a small rodent has attracted her attention. Carefully, she tries to get closer. This can take several minutes. Locating the objective is literally a case of playing it by ear. didn't work this time, but not to worry. There are plenty of snacks where that came from. Patience pays off. A short while later, and an inattentive luck puts a smile back on the serval's face. The cat searches for a cool, shadowy resting place in the increasing heat. Lions don't consider servals as competitors. The small wildcats are mostly ignored by them. Lion mothers are on the move. 
With such an abundance of prey, it is anything but difficult to be successful, even in the daylight. Surprising the victims in the riverbed is a proven tactic. Everything seems to be going according to plan. When suddenly, the tide turns. Badly injured, the lioness trudges into the shade. She won't be able to hunt for weeks, and her milk supply will soon run dry. The other mothers haven't noticed anything about the situation. They often don't see one another for weeks on end. While the cubs are very small, the mothers avoid any contact which could put their babies at risk. Yet still, the simple presence of the sisters is a life insurance policy. Prey is very rarely eaten in its entirety, so that the ill or injured can be certain of their share without having to hunt themselves. As long as the wilder beast herds are in the vicinity, the mother of the four is okay. She's well nourished and has plenty of milk on tap. In the late afternoon, she's off hunting, even though she's not really hungry. At times when food is in ample supply, lions fill up their reserves whenever they can. The herds spend just a few months in the valley, making it prudent to use every opportunity. An experienced lioness makes a hunt look like child's play. But in fact, the risk of being injured is high during each attack, as some wilder beasts know how to defend themselves. In the cool evening air, the neighboring pride begins preparations. The teenagers can hardly wait for night to fall. They are in the best of health and are bristling with strength. hunting instinct is immediately aroused by a passing zebra. What better time to practice what their mothers have so diligently taught them? But they have obviously overestimated their abilities by far and appear quite confused. Two lionesses don't take things really seriously. The night will provide more simple hunting possibilities. For a few minutes, the savanna is blanketed in calm and peace as if all present want to draw breath after the heat of the day and prior to the tension of the night. With a thermal imaging camera, we can follow events even in total darkness. As far as elephants are concerned, they go about their business regardless, whether it's day or night. Most herbivores are now noticeably quieter than they are at daytime. 
Almost soundlessly, the zebras refill their water reserves. Columns of wildebeest make their way to a resting place. They too are very quiet, as lions listen in the dark for telltale sounds. That is, when they're not preoccupied with their offspring. The injured lioness has made it back to her little one's lair. She is still able to give milk. The herds now rest. Stoically, they ruminate or nibble on the odd snack, as always hungry buffaloes do. Not far away, hyenas are getting ready for the night shift. They almost always only hunt in the cool of the night. Without moonlight, both hunter and hunted have to rely primarily on their sense of hearing. The buffaloes can hardly be overheard, but the hyena's behavior shouldn't be taken that seriously. Two lionesses from the pride on the upper reaches also have their sights set on the buffalo herd hoping for sick or young animals. They have to give up quickly this time. The herd has picked up their scent and is not exactly amused with being shadowed. Her sister, the female with four young cubs, is also out and about. It's one of the first nightly excursions for her little ones, and she's nervous. She keeps stopping and listens intently. A serval is also a nocturnal hunter. As he only hunts by ear, so to speak, the darkness is of little consequence to him. He seems to prefer birds to mice and quickly forgets Mickey. Just maybe the mouse in the grass would have been a trifle better than the bird in the air. Relaxed, the lioness continues on her way. She knows that her children are not in danger here. The destination of this nocturnal excursion is the wildebeest that the mother killed late in the evening. The babies don't quite know what to do with the prey, but still nibble here and there enthusiastically. The sooner they get used to meat, the better the mother can feed them. However, momentarily, they still need her milk. At least their interest in meat has now been aroused. The teenagers of the neighboring pride are served the finest their mothers can provide almost every night. But they hardly do anything themselves to help out. Instead, they often frustrate the two adults with their constant pranks. It's often too enticing to practice creeping up on the unsuspected elephants. And indeed, the gentle giant is completely unaware of the curious teenager right next to him. That he remained unnoticed by the elephant is possibly a triumph of sorts, but it didn't have the desired effect for the youngster. The females stop at intervals and just listen. Without moon or starlight, they can hardly see anything. At last, in the pitch darkness, one can just make out the sounds of a large herd.
The lions behave completely differently at night. There is no more reason to hide. Openly, they approach the telltale sounds. The antelopes don't react until the lioness is very close to them. The lionesses take turns in the attack and attempt to locate individual animals that have lost contact with the herd. Everything seems to go to plan. But in the dark, they didn't notice that the end of the column had already passed them by. They waited too long. The two huntresses won't slacken the reins. Success is just a question of perseverance. After such hard graft, it's the two lionesses that get the least of the prey. Nobly, they wait for their young to eat first. Every ounce of food secures their chances of survival. Reserves for harder times. The wildebeest is hardly a mammoth feast for 12 hungry mouths. As yet, the hyenas haven't had much luck tonight, but it's cool enough to give it one last try. Their hunting tactics are ostensibly simple. They approach a herd openly and bring them up to speed. They chase the animals around without actually following specific wilder beasts. But then the serious business starts. They increase the speed and follow an individual wilder beast. Hyenas are unusually tenacious. They have the largest hearts of all African predators. They can easily run for several minutes at speeds of around 50 kilometers an hour. Very few ungulates can outstrip that. This time too, the hunters are successful. In the early morning light, the cleanup brigades go to work. But the pride has left very little behind this time. The night shift is over. A leopardess pulls her kill from the safety of the tree. She has young to feed in a thicket close by. There is no time to lose, as she should avoid being surprised by lions in the open at all costs. The remains of the lion's prey. Here, the mood begins to get a little heated. The black-backed jackal is anything but enthusiastic about the uninvited brunch guests. Doggedly, he defends the leftovers from the gate crashers. Unlike plants, meat is a very energy-rich form of nourishment. Just a few bites, and the jackal family are set up for the next day. A spot of belligerence is worthwhile after all. Same applies to the vultures. This pup is noticeably impressed by the turmoil and shyly keeps a safe distance. Especially when a very large hyena drops by. The mother 
is clearly concerned. The hyena only has eyes for the long bones of the legs. Hyena's jaws are powerful tools. And it's this fact that makes these animals the only ones in the bone-crushing business. Marrow provides refined fat. For almost two months, the injured lioness was nowhere to be seen. Now she's back, her face disfigured. She only survived thanks to leftovers from her sisters. She even produced enough milk to be able to rear two of her three cubs, despite adversity. They certainly look healthy and strong enough. the solidarity of the pride, the entire family would have starved to death. This doesn't mean that everyone is free to help himself. As a matter of principle, the males always claim the lion's share. Actually, this time, they also earned it. For once, the ladies were also allowed to take part in the abundant feast. Far behind, a solitary lioness hungrily observes the scene. She is one of the lionesses from the pride downstream. Here, the territories meet, and she dares go no further. In frustration, she helplessly marks the grass. She knows the rules. The upper course lionesses would attack her if she came any closer. Lionesses always defend their territories. The pashas, on the other hand, remain relaxed. After all, Every female in their territory is a potential partner. An unknown male is gadding around the area. The commotion has attracted a young lion, and perhaps he is hoping to steal a few morsels from the females. Bad luck for him that the territorial bigwigs are present. immediately submits to his superiors and discovers that it's his lucky day. The district authorities could have killed him outright, but as he's so young, they don't take him seriously. A few cuts and bruises, and his ordeal is over. The rulers ignore him and turn their attention to their daily business. At the top of the agenda is the extensive marking of their territory. The scent signals are a warning to newcomers. Attention, danger. Other males are to be deterred so that ugly scuffles and fights can be prevented. The same scent has a comforting effect on the females 
and signalizes that the fathers and protectors of their young are present. It can only turn dangerous when there are no fresh markings. This means that other males could attempt to take over the ostensibly unclaimed territory. This would mean grave danger for all the young animals, which would only be in the way of the new rulers. The valley is covered with a network of warning signals. As long as the males are close by, the lioness can feel relatively safe with her young down by the river. But the little ones have to be nimble in order to keep up with her. The riverbed still provides the best options to hide the young. Even when it looks as though the clumsy balls of wool are not always in the best of moods. All four have made it to here with no problems. After such a tiring hike, a well-earned break with a snack is on the books. But the mother is nervous. They are being observed. The strange male could pose a danger for her children. Understandably, the lioness is extremely worried. That doesn't seem to have impressed the young man very much. The mother and her offspring have barely withdrawn when he decides to approach the injured lioness's family. The disfigured lioness keeps her eyes on him while he lays down with the group and doesn't stir. The little ones seem somewhat unsettled. The young male with the crumpled ear ignores the mother and comes closer and closer. The youngsters react quite warmly. At last, someone new to play with. But then again, there are differing opinions within the family. The lioness is not quite so sure about the intruder. Her main concern is her children's welfare. But the stranger is not really a cause for anxiety. All he wants to do is play with his siblings. The teenager with the injured ear is an elder son of the female, and it seems to be no more than a simple case of a young lad who misses his mother. He doesn't just want to play with his siblings either. Out there and left to his own devices, he would probably starve to death. Instead, he accompanies different females of the pride and manages to scavenge the odd morsel for free. In times of abundance, that sort of thing is relatively harmless. 
But when prey becomes scarce, someone like him can become a threat for the younger offspring. No wonder the mother is not particularly overjoyed at his presence. His younger sisters and brothers, on the other hand, are quite thrilled. While the eldest son keeps a respectful distance, she brazenly approaches the father with her small flock. He seems to be entirely indifferent to the situation. The old man is not at all sure what to make of the agitated youngster. Whatever happens, the peace and quiet is over. The mother of the four still keeps her distance from the pride. As long as the herds are in the territory, she needs no support from her sisters. The babies are in a secure hideaway, and she can thus focus on the next hunt. She is well nourished, and her teats correspondingly round and plump. The wilder beasts are reluctant to linger in uncharted terrain, and in the afternoon, they move out into the open savannah. The lioness often follows them for several miles and has no problem at all keeping up with the wilder beasts. This time, she seems to have taken it too lightly. She probably hoped for an animal to make a false move and lose contact with the herd. Sometimes, she can block the way of animals that flee in the hope of reaching their herds. She was unlucky this time, but has to give up. children wait for her down at the stream, well hidden by the maze of bushes. While she, exhausted, waits for new opportunities, the buffalo herd wanders along the edge of the valley. A gust of wind carries the scent of mortal enemies. The buffaloes do not hesitate for a second. After an exhausting afternoon, the lioness returns to her children's hideout. Today, her calls remain unanswered. The buffalo have discovered the lair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not all fell victim to the attack. Mm. 
Two of the four siblings were able to escape the herd. stroke of fate comes at a time in which further upheavals are emerging. The pride now faces an uncertain future. The lion's main source of prey, the wildebeest herds, are on the way south, back to the Tanzanian sector of the Serengeti. But first, they have to overcome the Mara River. The wildebeest spend a great deal of time looking for a shallow section, but the Mara has almost only steep, roughly 10 meter high embankments. Before long, the first animals muster their courage. During their migration to the south toward the end of September, tens of thousands of animals force their way through the river. Behind them, they leave a largely empty country. For the lions, chained to their territories, it's a catastrophe, as they have to make do with the prey that lives the entire year on the banks of the Mara. After the buffalo attack, the lion mother leaves the valley with her two remaining cubs. The little ones seem glad to be putting the fearsome environment behind them. She hopes to connect with the other members of the pride, as the support of her siblings has now become an essential factor for survival. The pride on the river now faces hard times. There are many mouths to feed, but without wildebeest, there is very little to eat. Now the pride will have to turn mainly to warthogs to curb their hunger. They give birth to their young just in time when the herds are leaving, but they provide little more than light snacks. starving lions, every oh-so-humble morsel will very soon be bitterly fought for. The youngsters face some very lean weeks. Without regular prey, the mothers can hardly give milk. The fate of the entire pride will be decided during the course of the following months. unbeatable as a pride. Time and time again, mothers risk their lives to support their offspring. When the wildebeest herds migrate south, there is hardly any prey left. The noble animals face hungry times. The following months decide over life or death for the youngsters. But it's other lions that pose the greatest threat. February in the north of the Serengeti, the dry season. The wildebeest herds left months ago. The two prides along the Ronkai River face lean times. 
A large pride lives on the lower reaches of the Ronkai. Prey can still be found here and on the banks of the Mara River. The two lionesses have managed to bring through eight of their ten adolescents, all of which are becoming braver by the day. They shouldn't waste too much energy so that each meal lasts for as long as possible. The barren savanna offers no cover and hardly any prey. Some of the females on the upper reaches have lost their young and despite shortages, immediately go about providing new offspring. For the warthogs, the coming months will be no picnic. Then, not only lions, but hyenas too make things difficult for them. Actually, the hogs are feared and agile opponents. Hyenas seldom dare to attack an adult animal. <laughs> this mother is not afraid of attacking the entire pack. Her tusks are dangerous weapons. The hunters have their sights set on the piglets and keep well clear of the enraged female. The hyenas are hungry, and there are simply too many of them. Even now, the mother doesn't hesitate to face the enemies. But it's too late. Eventually, she gives up and follows the second youngster, able to escape the turmoil. <laughs> the Mara River is the only constant source of water in the region. It's also home for countless hippos and crocs. State-of-the-art technology reveals what happens during the night. The thermal imaging camera records even the minutest temperature differences. The sun-warmed riverbank rocks illuminate a ghostly setting. The crocodiles were successful. The meat of the prey is still very much warmer than the cold-blooded hunters. It's also time for the hippos to go out for a meal. When grazing, they often travel several miles away from the river. An old acquaintance pops up. This lioness lost two of her four children in a buffalo attack, but her other two have so far survived the hunger period well. She could hear the zebras in the dark from a long way off and is hoping for a chance to hunt. As is often the case, her noisy entourage betrays her location much too early. Half-heartedly, she nonetheless leaps into action. Absolutely no chance. The Pashas now stay close together for most of the time. Prey is rare and they cannot count on the support of the females. They are obliged to go hunting themselves. The massive hippo feels safe. It has heard the lioness, but shows little reaction. What can a female do to him? The little family is lucky. A group of warthogs was lying low in a far too shallow den, and the lioness was able to snatch herself a piglet. Her young have been taken care of for the moment. It's just a small portion, but it has to last for the next few days. In the meantime, the lions have made their move. 
the four brothers have overcome the hippo. For them, a huge mountain of meat. Although more than enough for them to eat, they're in no mood to leave the waiting hyenas even the tiniest morsel. At least one of them remains to guard the prey, despite being anything but hungry. No hyena ventures any closer, as to do so would mean risking their lives. The next morning, it's the same story. Three days and the pashas haven't budged an inch. And as none of the females have noticed the carcass, there's nothing to share. One always keeps watch over the disreputable buffet. The others wait in the shade until it's their turn to stand guard. Day by day, ever more walls of cloud dominate the sky. Then, the rainy season begins. hunter and the hunted. These are unpleasantly cold and wet days. Nevertheless, during the following weeks, the incessant rain provides the basis for an entire wealth of new life. Especially the topis become active. Dozens of bulls congregate in open spaces and begin marking small rutting territories. Whoever strikes the best pose can be sure of getting the most girls. Territories at the heart of such arenas are naturally in great demand. For the bulls, it's an extremely exhausting time, but it's worth the effort. The winners pass their genes on to the next generation. Torpies make use of the higher areas, which, despite the heavy rainfall, are still relatively dry. They don't feel at home in the wet flatlands. There are, of course, others who feel rather attracted to wetlands. Long before the rainy season, the spring swamp of the Ronkai was an important water and food source for many animals. When months ago the wildebeest herds migrated to the south, many lions from the pride on the upper reaches returned here. The tall, lush grass has a magnetic appeal, especially for buffalo. There are new kids on the block. A lioness in the pride has given birth and has hidden her young in the dense network of reeds. A labyrinth of hassocks and shallow pools. Every so often, the lioness takes her offspring to a new shelter, of which there are countless in the almost impassable terrain. Buffaloes, however, are not really the best of neighbors for lion babies. The lioness knows that her young are in mortal danger once discovered by the black giants.
Single females rarely attack buffalo, and even when, they're not hunting, but simply trying to protect their young. She takes a very high risk. When her second buffalo attacks, she keeps out of harm's way. At least, to a certain degree, she has managed to intimidate her huge opponents. A change of scenery. The lower course of the Ronkai. The neighboring pride has made rich pickings. Considering the time of the year, this fellow here comes as no surprise. The warthog. For the most part, the youngsters are out of the woods, but they still need their mothers for the next couple of months. Once they reach adulthood, the young females will be of enormous profit to the pride. The young males, on the other hand, will have to leave the area and search for their own territories as soon as they are sexually mature. The rainy season has now reached its zenith. Violent storms lash the area every afternoon. Rain doesn't pose a real problem for the adult animals, but they certainly find it unpleasant. Tropical storms are often centered on an area comprising very few miles. This time, it's at its strongest immediately over the upper course of the river. Basin is completely flooded. Before long, the lion nursery will be underwater. The lioness begins her search at dusk. The slightly elevated hassocks prove life-saving for one of the young. Pitiful calls lead the mother to the sole survivor. The decision to use the swamp as a refuge had fatal consequences. <coughs> Saved. Now the lioness has to quickly bring her little one into the dry. later. The continuous deluge of rain has caused the plants to grow admirably. But nature in full bloom doesn't mean that the problems the lions are confronted with are over. On the contrary, now they're sinking in a sea of grass. The big cats now have plenty of cover, but they can't see much beyond their surroundings. And everywhere, dozens of watchful eyes scan the environment. Gazelles are incredibly nimble. Should the only moderately fast lions hope to be successful, they have to get as close as possible.
Well, without being noticed, of course. Is, this is a hopeless task. The only real and available prey is the warthog. And they are not the easiest to catch. Chasing their prey between the meter-high ears of wheat they often lose their sense of direction, wandering frustratingly in circles. But the pigs are also incredibly alert and vigilant. And the cats don't cut a good figure in direct comparison either. They need their powerful paws with which to catch and overcome their prey. Their heavy bodies, bristling with muscles, are not designed for quick sprints. be the most beautiful creatures, but the pigs are certainly effective sprinters. The pride is often alone for weeks on end, as the herbivores keep away from the high grass. Now they can choose the best and safest places to be. This is a catastrophe for the lions. The last two remaining young of the tested lioness are nothing but skin and bone. They haven't grown an inch in months, and their fur looks as if it's too big for them. The young male with the frayed ear has teamed up with his aunt. The moody teenager is tolerated, but hardly ever participates in the hunt. The emaciated mother has been unable to give milk for weeks, and the little ones have very little strength left. Because of the weak young, she is getting nowhere fast, but it's imperative that she finds prey. The situation quickly deteriorates. One of her young can no longer get up. The mother's will to survive prevails. She cannot do any more for her child. For her last child, the next days will prove crucial. The mother can no longer show any consideration, as she is now fighting for her own survival. His survival depends on how successful his mother is at hunting. Things look better over at the neighbor's pride. They have wandered primarily alongside the Mara River, there where warthogs can often be found. This time, everything seems to fit. The hog recognizes the danger when it's too late.
attentive witness has been observing the drama. A very hungry witness. The alien male immediately searches for a ford through the Mara. The four territorial males seem to be off the radar, so all he need do is to cross the river. On the other bank, the meat is disappearing by the second. Ten hungry lions have a huge appetite. The male shouldn't let his fear of water hold him up for too long. Females won't dare to argue about the food they have worked so hard for. It's not worth risking injury, just for a few more bites to eat. The few scraps each of them received will have to last for quite a while. The females from the upper course have since joined together with their surviving offspring. From the original 13 cubs, just five have survived. Ragged and thin, they extract the last traces of energy from the hungry mothers. They hardly ever play anymore. After just a few rounds, peace prevails. As a group, their chances of catching hogs are much better as they can ambush them. But this requires a lot of manoeuvring in the tall grass. A difficult task. They try to drive the pigs to one another without seeing their hunting companions. The lionesses spread out around the unsuspecting victims. In a large arch, one of them positions herself at the back of the group. A second lioness approaches directly she is supposed to drive the pigs toward the catcher. Correct timing is decisive. One piglet goes the wrong way, and it's not nearly as tenacious a runner as the adults. The lioness is there in a flash, but she is no longer a partner, but a rival. The piglet is just a tiny snack for four lionesses with their young. Stragglers, naturally, not the most welcome. The little ones have to go to the back of the queue. The successful huntress is in no mood to share, not even with the young. And as brutal as it may sound, the survival of the older animals is a priority. They need sufficient energy for the next hunt, or in the worst case, for the next litter, which perhaps would have a better chance of survival. In times like these, everyone has to look out for themselves. This is why the four females cast out the young male a few days ago, who, due to his scrounging, was significantly responsible for the hunger of the lionesses and her last five cubs. Ah. 
It's now June. The last five can now begin to hope. Salvation can emerge at any time now. The time has come. The first wildebeest herds of the Serengeti are returning to the north, to the lush pastures on the Mara River. They are eagerly expected. For the lions, the sheer mass of the wildebeests rings in the end of their suffering. Initially, it's unclear just where the herd will cross the river. The cats follow the columns on the opposite bank and simply bide their time. have reached the safety of the shore. But it's more a case of out of the frying pan into the fire. Life hasn't been as easy as this for them for months. Now, for the lions, it's a land of plenty. With so many excellent opportunities to hunt, the females will soon go their own ways. The tall grass, recently a means of escape for warthogs, is now welcome cover for the hunters. A seemingly dead certain attack turns into a fiasco. The wilder beasts are quite capable of defending themselves. From a lion's point of view, they have both a soft, round, and a hard, pointed end. The latter should be avoided at all times. The bull manages to counterattack every time. actually decides to attack himself. Unnerved, the lioness gives up. say who was the most fortunate here.
The neighbouring pride is also making the most of the splendid opportunities. Even with their playful offspring in tow, the two lionesses welcome every chance on offer. As is often the case, each animal does its own thing. Hunts like these are rarely coordinated. When they close in on each other, both are as good as invisible. Neither candidate knows what the other will do next. attack failed miserably, but one wilder beast has lost contact with his group. He knows how to defend himself. As long as he can keep the horns between himself and the female attacker, he is in relative safety. But the two sisters are an experienced and deadly team. Night after night, the lions spread fear amongst the herds. These are the times in which the animals are most likely to correspond to the king of the animals concept. But life for Africa's largest predators is anything but regal, even if their appearance is truly majestic. The four brothers rule over the territories of several prides, whose earlier protectors they ousted with their overwhelming combat strength. Back then, many young animals fell victim to them as the offspring of their predecessors simply delayed their own propagation. Females who already rear young are simply unwilling to mate. The four Pasha's strategy was successful in those days now they are fathers to many young lions. But intruders can endanger their offspring at any time. The quartet has to manage an enormous area. Even if they split up, it's hardly possible to do. The lioness and her two youngsters make their way through a valley that has not been patrolled by the males for some time. Two young males feel heartened as they see the area as a potential territory of their own and act just like the fathers of these cubs once did many years ago. Instinctively, she knows that the male strangers pursue just one objective, to annihilate all of the competitors' offspring. The lioness defends her little family vigorously. to keep one of the attackers in check. 
but she cannot prevent the second male's breakthrough. Her struggle was in vain, and disaster runs its course. The strangers have vented their aggression and now move on indifferently. They can now no longer guarantee their females' protection throughout the territory. And for this, the lionesses and their children pay a very high price. Mm. The brothers have noticed that other lions have penetrated their territory. Their loud calls threaten all strangers within hearing distance and confirm their own solidarity. And they can be heard for miles as they loudly signalize their willingness to fight. By day and by night, for hours on end, they search their territory for any traces of intruders. every inch to warn off those who would dethrone them. In the neighboring territory at the lower course of the Ronkai, the females remain unimpressed. Their offspring is old enough to pursue a power change on the executive floor. However, due to the loud vocal activities of the males, hunting has become somewhat difficult as most of the wilder beasts have left the valley as a result. One animal has been left behind. Its unsteady gait indicates that it's been injured. two cats go about their deadly business with playful ease. Yet another few days without hunger for the large family. 
Four brothers no longer go their separate ways, but demonstrate their combined strength. They can sense the threat of an exterior force. There are not just two challengers. The four brothers have discovered the would-be usurpers. And they are ready to fight to the death. The intruders can also depend on the fighting power of four lions. But they understand that a direct confrontation would still be too risky. The territory owners don't want to leave things merely with the demonstration of power. But the rivals are fully aware that time is on their side. The territory of the four experienced brothers is so great that the borders are unclear. For just how far should they follow the strangers? In the increasingly uncomfortable heat, they give up. The duel is simply adjourned and the intruders have slipped away. Who knows how the balance of power will be the next time they meet. The future will most likely belong to the young and powerful challengers, as long as they play their cards right next time and remain united. Whatever happens, for the females on the river, it means upheavals. They will have to continue the fight in order to bring up their young. But they are, and always will be, the true rulers of the Valley of the Lions. <laughs>